This is an Nexus Special, Episode 29, WWDC 2014. On Monday, June 2nd, 2014, and now there's a hairy situation backstage. This Nexus Special is hosted by Ryan Rampersad and Brian Mitchell. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? I'm uh, pretty well. I heard there was a pretty big day at uh, Moscone. Yeah, it was uh, WWDC 2014. Yeah, and, and it's uh, an unusual one. Uh, this one, no leaks beforehand, no big like, oh, look, there's a new iPhone coming out. Just we didn't really know what to expect other than a new OS 10 and a new, new iOS. Yeah, that was that was assumed, but the, the details were a little more... A little, yeah, Unknown. There, there are some good guesses by people, and some some leaks that I have seen um, over the last couple of months, mostly for iOS. But mm-hmm. yeah. So um, you can uh, watch the keynote if you really, really, really want to watch two hours, or you can listen to us instead. Uh, or you can do both. You could do both uh, at the same time in different years. Mm. Um, all these links will be in our show notes, of course, which you can find at thenexus.tv slash ns29. Yes. It's kind of funny because, uh, you know, NS is kind of like that next step, next son kind of namespace. That's kind the, of funny. The precursor to all those yep. functions and mm-hmm. uh, objects, yeah. Oh, developer jokes. <laughs> so why don't we get started talking about some of the new things? Let's start with OS X. Yeah, so the the, the biggest thing that someone's going to notice is the whole UI change. Um they like to use those Gaussian blurs and transparency that you've seen in iOS 7, mm-hmm. and I think they've really pulled it off. It's I think it's very clean, and I like it a lot better than I did when I first saw iOS 7. Mm-hmm. I think it, it fits more on a desktop, Definitely. especially with transparencies. Um, so yeah, just basically everything you see is probably a little different. I like the uh, progress bars. They're not they're no longer like the white and blue every other kind of dash thing. It's mm-hmm. now just a black bar that kind of has a, a horizontal gradient that moves across. More like, uh, I think Windows has something like that. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's a nice touch. I like what they've done with the dock. The dock is like um, fogged glass almost, and the icons sit on top of it. It's not the, you know, traditional 3D sort of dock yeah, it's, table. Uh, it's kind of back to the 2D you've seen in yeah, Tiger. Like, yep, 10.4. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, any other... Okay, some other visual changes, I guess, are the uh, the new spotlight. So that's very different. It, it's now no longer tied to the menu bar. I mean, the icons up there. But when you click that, it loads um, it in the center of the screen. This is pretty much exactly what the app Alfred mm-hmm. um, does, but uh, it's spotlight and built in, and it lets you um, pull in from other sources as well. Um, you've written in these notes here. It uses Bing instead of. Google, I guess. Yeah, apparently it's using Bing as a backend for knowledge. So one of the things that the new Spotlight can do is it will query, you know, so if you if you type in, and their example is, of course, Yosemite, uh, if you type in Yosemite, it will, you know, load up a link for uh, Wikipedia, and then if you, for some reason, wanted a map to Yosemite, it would load up a map for that, um, and then various other things. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking it's probably using Bing because they use Bing as examples elsewhere too. They use yeah, and they use Bing in Siri mm-hmm. as well, yep. which really really annoys me when I want to Google search something. <laughs> That's funny, and actually. Also, something we didn't actually say: it's OS 10 Yosemite. Oh, is that a thing? Huh. So it's OS 10 10.10. 10. Oh man, that's that's such We're a weird numbering system. OS 10.1. If you're going in real like adjective actual like progression there. yeah well uh, apparently their argument of course is that those those aren't actual like integers or or, or, or doubles those, those are just separators those dots they're not real they're sep- they're uh they're they're doubles until until you get that overflow so what do you think about the the name yosemite do you think that was a good choice i think it was good i really saw it as the next one yep when they started with um mavericks i'm like what is mother like oh yosemite that's Right That's over probably, there. Yeah. It wasn't OS X weed. No, was, much to right. everyone's dismay. Now, my one problem with calling it Yosemite is the word itself looks so messed up. But, you know, whatever. Like, it's Yosemite. Yosemite. Yes. Exactly. See? See? Everybody. Yosemite. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't know. So, what other things um, did uh, the OS X include? Well, um, something that I think is a very exciting feature is their continuity. Um, and so, this... 
has some more like seamless integration with different devices, so your iOS devices or other Macs. And so, um, for example, if you're typing an email and you switch to a different device, you can continue that email from where you were while typing it on another computer or another Seems device. pretty good. Yeah. And um, that will work with uh, messages. Um, I'm assuming a few other apps. They use mail and messages as an example. Maybe that's all. I'm not sure. So I don't. So uh, I was talking on at the Nexus earlier today, actually, about where this feature could be used, other than in very few apps. So messages, obviously, because what messages does is it just you know syncs message state across the phone, iPad, and OS X. And mail is an obvious one. But what others are there? So maybe you would use it for, like, you know, your iWork things. That's fine, I guess. But iCloud yeah. already had that background syncing, so this is already just an extension of that. But then third-party apps, like, for example, Evernote. Evernote doesn't need this because Evernote already has its background, own background sync. Yeah. So it wouldn't really apply to Evernote. Um, what other popular apps are there on the iOS platform? Um, Twitter. Snapchat, can, Instagram. Can you Facebook. imagine Twitter needing this? I I don't know what the point would be. I mean, it's only 140 characters. It's not too hard to write it out again. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I can see, like, okay, so you're viewing somebody's Twitter profile on your phone and you just want it to appear on your desktop. Okay, maybe. But that's not a good argument. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. So there is there are limited use cases, but it is a cool idea, you know, if somebody can do something with it. Yeah, it's adding that extra layer of seamless integration from yep. one to four move it from one to another, which I've missed. And that kind of leads into another one, whereas you can reply to texts from your Mac and send it through your phone. So that's really cool. Sync, but you can send an SMS from your computer, and I think that's a very cool feature. And you can even use your computer as a, so I should say Mac, a Mac as um. Well, a, sure you can say that, Mr. Hackintosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't tell the Apple police. Oh, they don't care. <laughs> I've talked to someone in an Apple store, an Apple store employee about Hackintoshing. Yeah, yeah, good. they they're 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 very fine with it. Yeah, they just don't want to help you. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can also answer a a call over a cellular net, cellular network on your Mac as well. Mm-hmm. And Craig called Dr. Dre, welcoming him to Apple as his example of that during a demo. I thought that was pretty funny. You can tell they just yeah. worked that in at the last minute. Uh, clearly, he was in- intended to call, you know, someone else. Do you think? Yeah, I'm sure they had it originally planned to call Schiller or something. Yeah, we didn't see Schiller at all today. Not at all. No, it was just Craig all day long, and that's okay. A little bit of, a little bit of Tim and some other helpers. Yep. So, um, the AirDrop is now compatible between iOS and... Um, I love how I wrote Android, because what am I smoking? Uh, <laughs> OS ten. Yeah, so I can finally send pictures and emails and whatever, you know, whatever you want. I think I, I think a lot of normal people will just use it for pictures. Um, yeah. You know, you, you know, you have a picture on your phone and you just want to get it to your computer, but you don't want to help use the cable and you don't necessarily want to, you know, send it to iCloud and then sync it back down and do weird things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll probably use it for that. I've basically just done share to Dropbox and then go to Dropbox on my computer. That's how I've done that. But so, what are the uh, big Safari changes? Well, um, starting off, a, the the toolbar so the, or the address bar is now a lot slimmer. It's all in one line, basically. Mm-hmm. So you have your window controls, and then I don't have a picture in front of me. I shouldn't be saying all this. But it's all one line, and it hides your um, bookmarks bar. So yeah. and the way they get around that is is you, you click on your address bar, and without even typing anything, it shows basically all of your bookmarks. You just click on that. that and that's, so that's kind of okay. It adds an extra click to your workflow, but it makes for a more... Um, I don't know. It it, lets it looks you... better. Yeah, because then you don't it... see all of them instantly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it allows for a greater workspace within the Safari window. I kind of wonder, like, if that. I don't think that's going to bother too many people either, because I I feel like I doubt a lot of people use bookmark bars. What? I've only used those. Those are like that's how I work. Oh, I know that's how I work, but I feel like we're not normal. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. Mm-hmm. I sh- Although no, I sh- actually. My mom has so many bookmarks, but she might use a toolbar. She has, like, hundreds. Right. Every little thing. What if I need to come back to this? Right. Oh. Yeah, so I I, mean, I use the bookmark bar exclusively. I don't use that bookmarks bar at all, or the, the you know, the menu system. So. Yeah. So how about mail? Well, mail, um, there are two new features other than, you know, the transparency and 
all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Um, you can now use something called mail drop. So if a an attachment is too large for your um, person you're sending to the mail server, um, it'll upload it to iCloud and send it with a link. And so if they're not uh, not another, um, I'm guessing OS 10 or yeah, iOS user, yeah, it'll show as a link you can download. Otherwise, if you are an Apple user, it'll just download it there mm -hmm. and show it as if it went through the web server. That's pretty nice. I think it's a really good good way to do it. Um, I don't know. Can't I can't find any faults with that. The other cool thing they introduced there is the markup attachments feature. So you can basically insert a picture, an image, whatever you want, or a PDF even, and then draw right on top of it. And it's yeah. not just basic drawing either. It's kind of intelligent. You can like draw an arrow, and it'll it'll find the curve of your arrow and put a new arrow in with your curve on it. Mm -hmm. And it looks quite professional. Same with like a text box, or you know, you draw a speech bubble or something. Yep. And I'm sure there's other shapes you can draw, too. Like, if you just try to draw a circle or a square, it'll do those things. I wonder if they have smart, smiley faces. Uh, I don't know if they got to that point yet. I would that, appreciate that, That's the next release. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How about Finder? Um, Finder now has iCloud Drive. So that's um, basically iCloud and Dropbox meet together. So you have a little separate folder for every app that uses iCloud, and you can view the files in there. You can also just drop in your own files. And so... The iCloud chooser on both iOS and OS 10, you can now choose any file within your iCloud drive. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, AirDrop is on both Finder and iOS. Right. I I think the, the 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 inclusion of iCloud Drive, which is hard for me to say because I feel like I should be saying Google Drive, but I know I'm not supposed to. Um, <laughs> you know, the, like the way they introduced iCloud it. iCloud Drive Box. iCloud Drive Box. That that that's exactly right. Uh, like the way they introduced it, like, oh yeah, this is how we're gonna do this, and they didn't make like a big deal. They didn't ooh and ah about it. It's like, okay, that's how we're gonna do, oh, you know, it's on Windows, right? That's how they introduced that. I I just thought it was really weird that no, they didn't make a big deal about that feature that everybody had wanted for years, just so seamlessly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what other any other uh, big OS ten things? Um. Well, did we touch messages? Uh, no. Let's let's go over those too. So you can now um, record um, video and audio clip messages. This is a kind of similar to Snapchat, in my opinion, mm -hmm. except you can keep them. So um, one of the uh, presenters for this for the demo called Craig, and there was a situation backstage with Craig's hair, and, and then there were some leaf clippers, and, uh, and then he came out, and his hair was just fine. So I, I, I wonder if that was actually pre-recorded or not. I'm sure it was pre-recorded because Craig's hair was not messed up when he came back. So yeah. it was almost certainly pre-recorded. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you can name you group conversations, which is pretty yeah. nice. And um, you can also um, add or remove group or, or participants to or from group conversations. So that's you can finally leave and not be stuck with getting notifications all the time. And you can also turn on Do Not Disturb for for a thread versus system wide. Oh, that's so nice. Or computer. Mm -hmm. That is that is the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they also talked about some like uh, enterprise features too for that. Like you could uh, in um, in mail, there was like a new way to do like VIP senders, so that if you got a message from, in a in an email, you could um, have it you know ping your phone or tablet differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even new enterprise stuff today. Yeah. So how about iOS eight? Well, wait. We still have one more thing. Oh, we or have one last? more thing. Or should we do the one more thing at the end? I think we have to do the one more thing at the end. Okay, cool. Sounds okay. good to me. Yeah, sure. So, iOS 8, it'll still have the same um, look and feel from iOS 7. It's very um, much the same UI. Yeah. Pretty impressed that they managed to not change things. Because iOS 6 had a few UI differences. I think iOS 5 didn't have too much. I think 5 to but, 6 was pretty pretty stable, but 4 to 5 was the change there. Yeah, well, 5 had... Uh, notification center, which added some new stuff. Mm -hmm. When when did they add the true multitasking? Like the three to four. Okay. And four had the new dock. Mm -hmm. Three had the older dock, I believe. Yeah, the, that sounds right. The what is it? The aluminum thing that's like the front of the Mac, the old Mac Pros. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So iOS eight. Um. One of the new features is the health health app with Health Kit, which allows um developers to tie in their health applications to Apple's central health kit thing. Yeah. They're they're thing. calling it a hub and it's pretty cool. So health kit is I'm pretty sure it's the way you code up whatever it is. Um and then health, which is a horrible name for just an app. Like I feel like and there the should be another word. Too. Huh? 
the icon's terrible. It's like someone drew a heart filled with pink and slapped it off center on a white icon. Okay, so uh, my reasoning for the way that icon looks is if you were to stare at another person's body in front of you, that's where the heart would be on their body. Yeah, and like, I got that too, but like, it just looks... I thought it was clever, and I was okay with it, because it was clever. If it had been a centered heart with a circle around it, I would have been angry. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's it's really nice that you can have all of your health info in one app. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Another uh, new thing is family sharing. So you can... um... Have families with up to six devices, or this accounts? I don't remember. I wasn't so, paying attention. So it's it's I I don't know how the accounts would work, but it's up to six devices. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. They mentioned different accounts. I think. So I like, think I think you can have your own account, but um the like the master account that everything is drawn from um would be separate. Okay. Yeah. And that and that'll allow you. They did a cool example where um the kid wanted to buy Minecraft, which is funny. Yeah. And then, uh, and the parent's phone had an alert where it said they can accept or reject that right. purchase. Right. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty nice. And I feel like that, that will, so you know, Apple's been in the, in trouble, you know, in the past few years for having kids do that in-app purchase deal. Like, oh, I just spent $4 million. $4. Yeah. So. Have you seen that, um, commercial for some, uh, magazine or newspaper thing where the baby's hitting the advertisement and they just ramp up production? Yep. Mm-hmm. That reminded me of that a little bit. So, I mean, this is a great way to crack down on that, but also to keep both parties happy and willing to buy things. Yeah. You know, it's a good compromise. Uh, yeah. The uh, next new thing is the interactive notifications. Oh, man, I am so happy for this. This mm-hmm. has been something that I, I jailbreak my iOS devices, and long before I even jailbroke, so, you know, this is probably like 2008 when the App Store first kind of came around, or, you know, that first first year or something of jailbreak. People have had quick reply for texting. Yep. And now you can do that. Um, natively. Yeah, natively. Um, and other apps like Calendar, you can um, accept or reject um, invitations for events. And I'm sure there's um, an API for what kind of buttons and things you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I'm very excited for that. So it there... looked a little too simplified to me. So their demos um, consisted of basically two things. It was either a text box with a send button, so like, you know, you got a message, you can reply to it, or there was a Facebook example where you could comment or like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those those two, those, you know, th- set of actions, those two actions are pretty much comprise most people's needs, I think. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Oh, and something we forgot with OS X, but it also is in um, iOS 8, is the new Photos thing. Yeah, well, it's actually not really an OS 10 yet because allegedly it's coming to I, uh, iOS first for iPad and iPhone and then sometime in the future, allegedly next year for OS 10. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. I don't I don't know. I'd imagine it would take longer on an iOS device than on a Mac, but Oh, I feel like I don't believe him when he says next year. I hope it's sooner than that. Yeah, I'm sure it is. They're it's just not a working demo. Yeah. It it was buttery smooth. Right. So, so what, what, what is the new updates to the Photos app? What, what is there? Well, it allows you to um, sync photos. It uh, stores everything. So I kind of imagine it's photo stream for everything, not like a thousand photo limit. And right. so it'll sync your all your photos across your iPhone, iPad, and OS X. Um, and your photos are stored in your iCloud storage. I think it's all the same. Mm-hmm. The Brick account gets five gigabytes by free, but now they're reducing the, the price a lot to... One dollar per month for tw- twenty gigabytes, um, or four dollars a month for two hundred gigabytes. So um, that sounds pretty good. And they have tiers up to a terabyte, mm-hmm. so you can store a lot of photos and other media. And this would probably include iCloud Drive as well. And I, and I feel like this pricing is pretty generous. Like that first five gigabytes is for the people who just have an iPad but then don't really use it. And then if you want it and you know this feature exists you can pay for it and get tons more for a very reasonable price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I like the, the new photo editing, you know, tools that are, you know, the basic color corrections and all of the things. Yeah, it's, it's very intelligent. So instead of just like, they did the example a couple of times where you just slide for brighter and slide for darker, but what it really does is it adjusts the contrast, the shadows and the highlights exposure or brightness and the exposure. And yeah, I so think, it, uh, it adjusts aspects as a part of its main you know, slider. So it's really nice that you could, you know, use the main slider to get a place you like and then find control it if you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and let's then, see here. 
something else new is they're I think they're really opening up the operating system. Definitely. And so one of these examples is you can now have a widget in Notification Center. Mm-hmm. Um, so they can only run Notification Center, but you can put them in there and have your app incorporate. Uh, they had a Sports Center thing. Although this was on OS X too, I believe. Yeah, so they didn't make it clear if these are the same widgets. I'm assuming they are. Uh, and until I prove it wrong, I will continue to do so. Yeah. Now, now, so these updates are nice because, uh, um, you know, the, these widgets are cool because, you know, you can have your, you know, your generic weather widget, I guess, but you can also do others. So um, there, there's that opportunity. But from what I hear, um, they're not, like, super interactive. So I don't think you can have, like, a calculator widget, for example. Okay. So, like, widgets that require, like, you know, UI kit, I guess, right? Um, yeah. You wouldn't be able to do that, I think. Okay. So it's like it's pretty limited to like text and like imagery and maybe a button or two, yeah. but nothing complicated. Widgets have been in iOS since iOS five, the notification center. Right. Currently, they're called Wii apps. <laughs> That's funny, actually. And uh, and so like the weather stocks and uh, while it existed, the share app widget mm-hmm. um, were the Wii apps. Um, let's see. Next up, we have Siri. Um, there's the Siri hands free. You can just say, "Hey Siri," and it'll listen and respond to you much like uh okay google it worked <laughs> yes and then it, and then it promptly stuff. googled it works <laughs> perfect yeah okay and, google uh, wwdc 2014 yes that's that's what i'm googling okay it, it didn't like that one it's just gotta be my voice yeah okay and uh it now has 22 languages for dictations that's a lot they're expanding upon it mm-hmm um and another surprise here is, well, part of this is a surprise, part of it is not, at least for me. The um, the quick type, is that what they call it? Yes. Quick type. So it'll predict what words you're going to use next, and it'll give you three options you can select. And so one of the examples they use is, uh, was, do you want to go to dinner or a movie tonight? Right. And the, um, the response in quick type was, um, dinner, movie, or not sure. And it'll, Pretty it'll reasonable. Learn, yeah, it, and it'll learn and adapt. Um, based on who you're talking to and what kind of things you say as suggestions. And they say they never upload it and it's all stored locally. So. And they also said that it was also going to learn based on not only the application you're in, but all, you know, across the system. But in addition to that, it will take into account which application you're in. Yeah. So that's really yeah. nice. So if you talk funny and only, if you know, if you, you write emails normally, but you talk funny in iMessage, those things will be separate. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope different people too as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. If yeah. it can find that info, I'm sure it'll try to figure it out. Yeah. And then one of the biggest surprises, at least for me, of iOS 8 was third-party keyboards. Woohoo! So an ex- the example one they had was a swipe keyboard. Um, did they do it on the stage demo? Um, was- I don't know if it was a – well, it wasn't a demo. It was definitely a, like a, you know, a slide that was moving. Okay. Yeah. I must have not actually been watching the keynote at that point. Yeah, it's fine. I'm asking. Um, and they and they use a very tight sandbox. Um, you'd have to allow for it to have network access. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, sure. I'm sure a lot of people will just allow it. I wonder what you would use that for, though. Um, so one thing you might do with it is you might, um, I don't know, like if you were trying to do like um, on-demand autocorrections, maybe, um, or something. I don't know. I yeah, I, don't, I just don't quite see why. And like, if they need to do an update for like something performance-wise, you could you could do it live over the network right instantly. But you know, I could also just go to the App Store. Well, but the App Store always takes you know like a week and a half to get verified and you know yeah. approved and stuff. So, you know, maybe if you just want to change dictionaries or something like that, then it's okay to use network access. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And another new thing of iOS 8, which I've heard heard developers complain about for years, is the interapp communications. And so this allows you to create an extension you can use in another application for um, if so an example they did was um, uh, was it Visco Cam or yep. something or another yep. mm-hmm. yeah so for an extra filter in the Photos app so the Photos app has some filters at least I'm assuming it still does in iOS eight yes it does okay and then but you also load the Visco Cam uh, extension and apply their filters and their native UI mm-hmm. within the Photos app. And then apply that and save it. Or do and then it returns right to the Photos app. It's really nice. I think that'll be very cool. Mm-hmm. It'll, the, the, I think it'll help a lot for apps transferring, you know, like a, oh, geez, 
I don't remember what the app did or what it was called, but it was something that it, you had a little uh, framework that was in other apps mm -hmm. that used something part of iOS that was eventually kind of Apple said, hey, you can't do that. Right. And basically, all the function of the other app just broke right there. Mm -hmm. So the other you're... examples that, that they showed was like they had Bing in Safari, and so Bing was uh, acting as a translator for this web page that was in Japanese. And uh, uh, I can't read Japanese and neither can Craig, and so Craig had Bing translate it into English, and then that, that Bing translate button is not obviously built into Safari, but Bing translate, the app, provided that extension to Safari, so it could do it, and then they also used that same, you know, translated instance of that web page to um, send over to a uh, Pinterest button. Yeah. So, like, the, 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 the potentials for these extensions are very far-reaching, and like I can't I can't even imagine what all of them are for. You know, up till now, you either had to code the ability to know what applications would share to you. So um, I know like some apps uh, that would open in Safari would also code in the methods to open in Chrome uh, because, you know, a lot of people like to use Chrome on iOS. And this way you can just does Chrome want to open a URL. OK, well, now I can. Because you use the flag Chrome colon slash slash slash. Exactly. And so they make up some order. You know, it's probably, they probably do the obscure ones first. And if those don't fire, it'll, you know, go down to Chrome and then Safari or something. Yes, exactly. So this so, will help that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited for that. Something I missed with um, QuickType um, was in iOS 5.1, there was part of a test of that released in iOS. And there was... Um, some jailbreak tweak that would allow you to try it out. And it was terrible and super buggy, and I just uninstalled it immediately. That's but funny. This looks pretty promising. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. We can go down to developers. Well, there are... Or... Uh, yeah, oh, so... Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. oh God. Okay, some things. So uh, let's talk about the App Store and developers. Yeah. So uh, new to the App Store, there are four main things, I guess. You can do video preview in your app, so if you record a video... You can play it there versus having to link someone to a website where a video is. Um, it's reasonable. Yeah. Now, when they said app previews, but they hadn't gone on to the next sentence, I thought for sure they were doing, like, trials or something. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. And I think that's where the initial part of the cheer came from. And yeah. And then it was just videos. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. I'm oh, like, videos. What are you talking about, Apple? That yeah. helps, I guess. I mean, it, sure it does, but I really wanted a, You know what would be better than a video? Uh, how about a trial? Yeah, that's, like determined by Apple for a time, and I don't know. I mean, uh, I think it should be term determined by price and yeah. type. I don't know. It's really complicated, which is why they didn't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, there's a little better search editor, editor picks on the new Explore tab. Um, developers can also use a bundle, so they can bundle um, a group of their apps for a cheaper price. So Potentially just, uh, cheaper. Hopefully, yeah. Buy this app bundle, and it's a dollar more. Hopefully no one does that, but time will tell. You know they will, and people will fall for it, too. Oh, Ugh. Mm -hmm. can't wait to hear all those rants. Oh, yeah. How about Test Flight? Yeah, um, so Apple acquired Test Flight, I don't know, last fall, maybe? Yeah, I think so. And um, so that allows, um, I think the limit was 1,000 um, users to come in and beta test a developer's app. So I think they can lock it for a, a certain number of I don't know, days or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so that allows people to draw out your app and say, hey, this is what's wrong with it, without worrying about um, the previous um, 100 registered devices per dev account. And, you know, so uh, at, at the last Google I.O., Google rolled out their, you know, beta testing mechanism, and developers just rejoiced, because up until then, the only way to develop or to, to roll out beta builds for testers was to... Um, you know, basically upload them to S Google or, you know, some website, either Google Drive or Amazon S3, and just have people download them and sideload them. And so this is great for developers. Now they can actually test their apps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think that'll be really cool. I hope I eventually either make an app or find someone who's needing beta testers. To yes. Try it out. One or both. Mm -hmm. exactly. So how about uh, HomeKit? HomeKit. Um, that's their new... Thing. thing for like smart lights, smart thermostats, smart locks, all the smart things in a house. It'll allow um, it was a, what a uniform protocol. Yeah, so they're they're saying, calling it um, HomeKit is the, you know the the on iOS system, you know all the APIs and stuff. And then the idea is they got all of these. It's a huge slide 
of names of companies who make these products and they but all follow cool. the same protocol, I guess. Yeah. Now, cleverly, the one that was absent is the Nest. The Nest, um, who's owned yeah. by Google now. Hmm, Which I was. wonder why. And but Nest was started by the designer of the iPod. Right, exactly. So isn't that funny? Yeah. Mhm. So how about uh Touch ID? Yeah, there's an uh, API for developers who can they can now use um Touch ID in their app to lock from I don't know, probably different parts of their app or just their app entirely. Yeah. So I, I guess it's using keychain somehow and the secure link enclave is still secure and everything is still good. It's just now you can authenticate using Touch ID. Yep. Sounds yep. good to me. Yep. CloudKit. Uh CloudKit. Uh that allows Apple to host um for um apps on their own servers. Um I think it was free. But, so um mostly have... free is what they say. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there is going to be a price, but um, they said up to a petabyte of assets. That's what they that mean. Just... It's effectively free, unless yeah. you're Facebook, you know? Yeah, something huge. So, like... And, you know, they have st- uh, set storage for database, mm-hmm. and I don't remember what the so, other thing So, the other things was, uh, f- so, one petabyte for assets. I assume that means static assets, like, you know, files stored with them, I guess, maybe? Yeah, um, totally. And- and then 10 terabytes of a database, which is insane, because I can't imagine what data you would have that would be that big. Um, 5 terabytes per day of asset transfer, and then 50 gigabytes uh, per day of database transfer. So I think you're probably good. The one that you'll probably run into is database transfer. Yeah. And then I'm sure the pricing for that is really, you know, in line with, you know, even either, you know, as competitive or more competitive than S3 or, yeah. you know, Azure. Yeah, that's 50 gigabytes for database transfer per day. Mm-hmm. That's and huge. was 5 terabytes of asset transfer? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll that at least, for Phil, be good for a small or medium-sized app, I'd say. I, I would even say most, and pretty much any app that has a web component that's willing to use Objective-C and Apple stuff, you know, to do it, any pretty pretty much any app that isn't you know like from Google, from Apple themselves, from Facebook, from Twitter, um, you know Dropbox, any normal app, I think we'll probably be able to use it. Yeah, I think it'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. Although when Apple goes down, everything. Goes oh down. well, you know iCloud never goes down, never. right? Messages is always up, right? Um, how about Metal? Metal, ooh yes, that's a new um, you say and yeah, new low level, lower than OpenGL, yes. Um, way to use the graphics available in the A7 chip. Um, so it's um, a lot lower to the hardware and lets people, u- uh, they said lower to the metal. There's a good picture online of, of Craig doing the rock on symbol next to the, the metal icon. That's kind of funny. I, I retweeted that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that allows for um, up to 10 times the performance. Um, there's a, a cool demo by uh, Epic Games of mm-hmm. some garden thing. Yeah, they they were showing off how they can render so many more triangles and also how they can render so many koi in a pond with AI, like, 500 at once. Yeah, and he was uh, ruffling a tree. He said there are 5,000 5, petals, but they're pretty clearly disappearing as they hit the ground, too. Yeah, but if, you, if, if somebody told you that, then you would believe them, and so if they don't tell you that, you won't notice. Yeah. But, you um, know, 10x performance is pretty good. Yeah, I think it'll be exciting. Not that I game very much, but... No, know. but, you know, I think it's also kind of... um, It's funny that, you know, Epic Games, you know, aren't they the ones who normally do the Infinity Blade series? I think so. So it's kind of funny that, you know, oh, look, here's here's a new platform for making games. Uh, and, and then everybody hears Epic's coming on stage, new Infinity Blade, and then they get a Zen Garden. Yeah. Kind of the opposite. Yeah, well, we'll see what gets created out of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh... They had some, I don't remember what the name was, but basically a 3D mode of Sprite Kit. Yes, it's a Scene Kit. Scene Kit. Yeah, yeah it's actually really, really neat, actually. Um, they didn't con- touch on that too much, but... No, but in conjunction with the following object here on the list, Swift, yes. it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and so Swift, that uh, Apple uh, basically was like, hey, surprise, new... Um, uh, Oh, geez, I'm totally blanking on new, that. New programming language. There we go. New programming language. So they uh, described it as Objective-C without the C, but it can also coexist with Objective-C and C. Mm-hmm. The little example up there, and it seemed pretty cool. A lot more uh, 
or a lot less text needed to write. So um, I think you know a little more about this than I do because you've had more time to play with it. Or well, I, I haven't actually. I don't think anybody's actually gotten to run Swift because I don't think you can download it yet. I'm not sure when that As comes. As a person developer, you can. Okay, well, uh, too poor for that. Well, so I've been reading some of the Swift programming language guide. It's on Apple's website, and I put a link in the show notes. Um, you know, it's kind of got the like. Um, it's a mix between like JavaScript. And a language that's better than JavaScript. Um, yeah. So, so, in a, so the types are optional; they're inferred, in other words. So, if you just say var blah 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 equals twenty, well, blah 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 is now an int because twenty is a number. So, yeah. types are inferred. That's really nice. There's some really cool closures so that you can pass functions around. Um, and just in general, the language looks better. Like it doesn't look so. Like, one of the problems with Objective-C for me is that it doesn't look like C and it doesn't even look like Java. It's a weird hybrid of nonsense. Whereas Swift looks a lot like Go or Rust, which are, yeah. you know, new generation programming languages. So this is really nice. Yeah, I'm I'm going to hopefully get around to playing with it a bit this summer and mm-hmm. what I come up with. I think so, it's kind of funny. All of uh, Apple's pre-release um, docs about iOS 8 and things are not actually behind a, a password right now. No, not at all. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but... I don't think they care. Yeah, it's just the C purely. So I don't see anything mentioning a uh, non-disclosure, but... I mean, the non the, not the that's fake. Like, it doesn't matter because they know that anybody can register with a fake name, fake IP, or whatever. That's not real. Like, if your docs were online, then they're going to be exposed. Yeah, and, yeah, I feel like the non-disclosure should more be within Apple before it's announced. Right. But... Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's non-disclosure so that um, media outlets don't start talking about it to people who don't need to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what else? Anything else? Uh, DuckDuckGo can now be a search provider in Safari. That's good, because you can never have enough Duck. And WebGL is finally enabled. After years of being a, a developer enabler thing. You know, it'd be that. kind of funny if they implemented OpenGL ES in, in Metal... So that OpenGL ES was faster. Huh. That's not how it works, but it'd be funny. Yeah, I have no idea really how it works. Yeah. And uh, I felt like this keynote had, they snuck in several more jokes into it. Oh, and, and a lot of jokes, a lot of humor. Um, at one point, Tim Cook said, he was comparing iOS and Android. They had bought an Android phone by mistake and then had sought out a better experience and a better life. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think that's even mean. I think that's a totally fine thing to say. Yeah, I think, yeah, it just sounds it sounds a lot like Apple. I mm-hmm. think. Definitely. I also thought this keynote in general, um, you know, compared to last year's WWDC, this one seemed a lot more upbeat and happy. Like, they had yeah. pro- they, they didn't have to do any hardware, so that wasn't a problem. But they also just focused on things. They didn't have a lot of time where there wasn't something going on. Do you remember last year's WWDC with those... With the guys who you had the little race cars on the track? Uh, I remember hearing about... I don't think I actually ever watched all of that. Because, yeah, like... I was in the car the whole time. But I remember, like, it just seems kind of stupid that they did that. Yeah, so they didn't do that this year. And it, and it was much less tense. Everybody was cheerful and happy and very well rehearsed. Uh, yeah, and they're... I think they focused on developers a lot more. Yes, which definitely. Which really helps with bringing it back to the Worldwide Developers Conference. Well, not to mention, the opening video of the keynote was actually, like, a big thank you message to developers from people yeah. who use the apps. Like, it was definitely focused on developers. I really appreciated that. Mm-hmm. So I think that that covers this year's keynote for WWDC. Yeah. So was there anything that you um, wanted to see that you didn't see here today? Oh, my. Um... I think uh, something like Flux built into iOS would be pretty handy. Yeah. But that's available on Jailbroken. Um, hold on. I'm just loading my phone right now, seeing if there's anything on here that I have that I wish. Um, something that was leaked in an image last night before WWDC was like a control center within OS X. Yes, right. I don't know if that's something they just didn't announce, because that's totally something they could do. I feel like, um, like before it comes out, I'm sure they could add more. So uh, I, I feel like they could add it by, you know, September. Yeah, there's also a third-party app that simulates um, Control Center. Mm-hmm. What would Control Center do for a Mac? Like, what would that entail? 
be a second system preferences. I I don't really see the point personally. I mean, it's the menu bar. I mean, in some ways, like like if I guess if you open Notification Center and then do it again, it could op- open the it could open Control Center and then you could have a big button to toggle Wi-Fi and a big button to toggle Bluetooth because you know yeah. people like big things. Yeah, I don't think that's so necessary. Um, you know, a lot of people wanted to see hardware at this WWDC. Yeah. No hardware. I felt pretty okay without any hardware. Then maybe they'll have a, a con- uh, another keynote with hardware. I don't hardware- know. Broadwell isn't coming out to the fall, so they have a little more time. Yeah. But I've heard Tim say new hardware by Christmas time. Right. So, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that we'll get, like, iOS 8 doesn't look, you know, unbaked. It looks pretty complete. The betas are going to start rolling out any minute now, and everybody's going to be hard. cheering. And so, I feel like we could get that pretty early in September. And yeah. then we would have I've plenty of time. Mid or late August for their release. Well, I mean, I, I feel like they don't even that it doesn't look like either of the products are obviously bug. Um, I've seen a few screenshots of some visual like issues, but you know the first few betas are going to be a little right. More. That's fine. That's great. And I mean, there's you know still three months between now and then, and I feel like they'll have plenty of time then to do a separate hardware event afterwards. And of course, you know whatever event they do in September is you know all for iPhone and iPad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah. yeah. I think uh, Tim Cook said at one point, 2014 is going to be a huge year for Apple. <laughs> yeah, that's what he always says. You hit June, and they haven't done anything other than a few refreshes. Then well, WWE, you see. That's why I always liked having the iPad announcements in you know February and March time frame, because it was just so nice to be able to have an event there, then WWDC, and then the iPod event, and then the iPhone event. Like five events, four events a year. Feels nice. Well, iPod really isn't a thing anymore. No, so. so they can't do that. And they don't want to have iPads right after the holidays because that makes everybody feel sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so we'll have to look forward to whatever they do next, and we'll have you on again when that time comes. Come around. Yeah. Thanks for coming on to the show here. Uh, where can uh, people find you on the internet? Well, I just bought my new domain a few hours ago. Oh, you really? Can- brianm.me nice or yeah. and it has on it that someplace linked to twitter and other things That's otherwise good. i'm bman 479 or tech 479 on twitter that sounds good and of course oh. you can find me ryan ramperside just about everywhere especially on the twitter ryan Omar. and of course on the google plus i have one but i don't really use it that's okay i i, I get to me and buck that's about all yeah of course yeah he he's the big enthusiast you know yeah well thanks and have a good one Thank you.